everybody, Jedi17475 here with another Star Wars video. Um, I apologize right off the bat on I have not been keeping up with putting uh, or uploading videos to YouTube. I have um, just not had the time, so I will do, I'm not sure, this may be a two or three part vlog now. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but uh, I just wanted to show you the stuff that um, I've gotten so far from the time that you have seen my videos last. So, right off the bat, I'll get into some small things. Um, I was in like a little, um, kind of a collector store, kind of not, and they had this episode one, Anakin and Sebulba pod racing plate. I mean, it's just a little plastic plate, and you know, for a buck fifty, I really couldn't complain. Um, so, you know, I just had to pick that up. Um, and while I was in that store, I got a figure from the Attack of the Clones line, which is about 2002-2003. Um, a little older than what I normally collect, but, um, 450, I couldn't complain as well. It is the Attack of the Clones Slave One Pilot Jango Fett. Um, this is actually my first Jango set, surprisingly. Um, and one of my smallest figures, actually. Um, since he is the Slave One pilot, he does not come with his helmet, and his, um, communications gear is not removable. He has a little action feature that when you, um, press his, uh, jetpack missile, his little arms come up in a shooting position, which, uh, it, it kind of, um, draws back the articulation, but, however, you know, for the time, that was a kind of nifty feature that they started putting in the Star Wars figures. Uh, moving right along, um, I will show you uh, my first Sog Legends of the 2010 packaging, and I got Bosk. At the moment, I am trying my hardest um, to get as many of the Empire Strikes Back uh, bounty hunters as I can. I have Bosk, um, I have Zuckus. Sadly, that is all I have right now. Um, Dengar will be coming soon, Forlom will be coming soon. Boba Fett, he's pretty hard to find in the Vintage line, because, you know, he's so popular. And, um, IG-88 and the Saga, Saga Legends I am looking for as well. Great figure. Now, with the Clone Wars and the Saga Legends, they come with these cards for the Galactic Battle Game, which tells their strength or abilities in the game. And then they also come with that stand that I showed you, as well as a little die that has little symbols that are on the um, player's card that um, helps to play the game, move the game along. I, I do not play the game. Um, but with the Sergeant Brick figure, mail away, he does come with a battle mat of some sort to play the game on. So, moving right along, I will show you uh, my very first vintage figure. And I got the Adat Commander. Great figure. I mean, I just love it. One of my favorite Imperial figures at the moment. Great packaging as well. It is sad, though, that the large accessories, such as, like, in Wave 5, uh, Ben Kenobi's large table with the Princess Leia hologram, big items like that will not be able to um, be put or packaged with the figures now because of the um, small vintage packaging. Great figure, great head sculpt. Absolutely love that. He's got his helmet. He's got goggles that can be put on the helmet and on his face. Take the helmet off. Take the armor off. Got just a regular Imperial officer. Comes with an E-11 blaster. I mean, what more could you ask for? And you know, such a great figure and highly articulated. It is a winner. Now, I'm very happy that I was able to complete Wave 1 of the 2010 Clone Wars line, as I am not very good on completing waves. Um, the first figure that I um, got was General Grievous. Very nice figure, and who I forgot to get down off the shelf, so if you'll excuse me real quick. Good. 
got him. He's a great figure, much better articulated than the um, Wave 1 uh, General Grievous figure. He only comes with the two um, versions of the arms instead of the four arms that could dislocate it and, you know, make the forearm version. So he only comes with two lightsabers. He comes with a battle damaged head and this regular head. Battle damaged arms, which are basically just cut off. Removable shoulder pads. And articulation at the, um, well, I guess that'd be the ankle. And no knee articulation, but, um, a better articulation at the, um, hips here. He also has a removable chest piece. Another thing is the shoulder pads come off very easily, so you've got to be very careful with that. But he has a removable chest piece. Not really that big a deal, but this is definitely a much better upgrade than the Wave 1 General Grievous. So what I have at the moment is I have my Wave 1 General Grievous in my General Grievous Starfighter, and then I have this one sitting on my Clone War shelf. So, to move right along, next in the wave one of the Clone Wars, I got the Bounty Hunter or a Singh. Um, once again, very nice figure. Um, I'm so glad that I'm able to build up my villains on the Clone Wars shelf, as I don't have a lot. Um, comes with two blaster pistols. They're the same, I believe. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're the same. She comes with a long sniper rifle, which she's known for. This antenna that was supposed to be back here, very small, coming out of her hair, for some reason looks like a 2x4 sticking out of her head, which is really um, not good. Fine articulation. She doesn't even need the stand. And overall, she looks great, very menacing. And decent accessories, so I'm real pleased with her. Next, for the Wave 1, we have the Mandalorian Police Officer. Great figure. Put him on the stand. He comes with a lift up visor, security baton, a sh uh, riot shield, which can be removed. And he comes with a rocket launcher, however, I don't have that out. And so, I mean, it's, an, it's actually a nice sculpt for the rocket launcher, and I really um, quite like that. So, not much to say about him. But. Finally, the last figure of Wave 1 is Pre Vizsla. I believe everybody has been looking forward to this guy, and he does not disappoint. He is probably one of my favorite Clone Wars figures at the moment. He comes with his Dark Saber. He comes with a removable helmet with a mighty fine head sculpt. Just looks just like in the movie. I mean, I can't get over how nice that is, and I love the helmet design, too. Uh, removable. Uh, Jetpack, which sometimes will fall off a little too easily, but that's okay. He's got a nice little cape with the Death Watch symbol. He's got two Mandalorian-style blasters, and he has what they are now calling Ultra Articulation. He has a ball-jointed neck, ball-hinged shoulders and elbows, ball-hinged wrists, ball-hinged torso, ball-hinged hips, ball-hinged knees, and ball-hinged ankles. So he's got a ball hinge or a ball joint anywhere that you can put articulation, which is just fabulous. And finally, for the action figures, i got to do this one quick, is Asajj Ventress. Um, some of the figures in Wave 1, 2, 3, um, and some of 4, I wasn't into the Clone Wars then, so I never really got around to getting them. So, very happy with this figure. Just wanted to show you quickly. Fine head sculpt the two lightsabers attached together and I'm really pleased with her. So, and she also has a removable um, skirt type thing. So, I will make a part two of this, so I will see you in part two. Alright, bye.